What you're observing here is a nuclear fusion reactor operating in real time. Within this device, energy is produced via the process of nuclear fusion. Let me break down for you exactly what's happening. The footage you're watching is quite fascinating. This subject will be among the main points we discuss in today's episode. Additionally, we'll look at this piece from Universe Today, which explores how alien civilizations might be detected in an instant. The article delves into the challenges involved in identifying extraterrestrial societies. It attempts to clarify why, up to now, humanity has never discovered any evidence or made contact with aliens. It also raises the question of why they might be avoiding us. This issue will also be part of our discussion. Furthermore, we'll examine a recent image of the Comet 3i slash Atlas, which was featured on a Medium blog post where Avi Loeb discussed this finding. We'll aim to interpret what's depicted in the image. It presents the anti-tail of 3i slash Atlas, that unusual reverse tail it possesses, right? So here's one more piece of evidence of the existence of this jet in the opposite direction from the sun. Right? Usually these jets, this tail, stay behind the comet in relation to the sun. In this case, sits in front. So we're going to try to understand what's going on here in today's video. So these are the topics I want to share with you, right? Sharing knowledge is so good, right? So I always try to do that here with you. And if you like my work here, want to show your support, like want to help the new Michioaku, but I don't know how, it's very easy. Leave a like or subscribe to the channel too. It helps a lot, right? Leaving a comment, leaving a like already helps a lot for YouTube to understand that this video is relevant and spread it to more and more people. I leave my sincere thanks to all of you here. Interesting topic today, isn't it? So let's go try to understand this crazy wild universe. Let's start with this very interesting article here from Universe Today, right? As I told you here, they are questioning, right? Saying, right, that alien civilizations would be detected by us in a short period of time, which they call just a blink of an eye. Why are they saying this, right? So the text here says, astronomers suggest that the reason we have not yet detected alien civilizations may be linked to artificial intelligence. The study starts from an idea of Carl Schon back in the 70s called the communication horizon. Here is Carl Schon, all happy here with a shadow. This communication horizon is the point at which a civilization becomes so technologically advanced that its means of communication are no longer detectable by us. So Carl Schon back in the 70s already had this idea about how an alien civilization could be communicating if it were very advanced. Look, at the time, Schon estimated that this transition would take about 1,000 years. But the accelerated advance of computing and artificial intelligence could reduce these windows to just a few decades. And people, this is true. Look, you take those AI videos from two years ago, right? Like that classic video of Will Smith eating spaghetti, which is a super bizarre thing, and take today's videos. Today, I even posted on my Instagram stories that like I can no longer distinguish some videos, right? Whether it's AI or not. Now. There's this surge of videos of animals doing things, right? Dog saving a baby, cat saving a baby, cat being carried away by a hurricane, you know, and seriously, they are very realistic videos. So there has been a very accelerated technological leap. So at the time Carl Schon proposed this idea, technology wasn't evolving that fast. Nowadays, the growth is exponential, right? Technological evolution is exponential. Well, as a civilization evolves, it adopts more complex forms of communication, perhaps with neutrinos or methods beyond light, and it becomes invisible to our current technology. So, it could be that the technology of these alien civilizations has evolved so much that our equipment here is too archaic to try to detect it, right? Thus, humanity would only have a cosmic blink of an eye. Is that what they say here in the title? Humanity would only have a cosmic blink of an eye to capture signs of an alien civilization before it advances beyond our detection capacity. This may explain the great silence, right? The apparent absence of detectable intelligent life in the universe. So what they are trying to say in this article is that the period of time in which an alien civilization has a technology compatible with ours is very short because for us, for us, it is being short. In a few decades, 
decades, we will already abandon current means of communication for other things. AI will do practically everything. So the growth after you create a type of technology, it ends up paving the way for other technologies. And as I said, the growth is exponential. So it's very fast. At the time, Carl Shawn didn't have this vision because it was the 70s, it was other things, an analog world, right? So they say that the moment we could detect alien civilizations with our technology is very brief. So it will be difficult for us to detect anything because the period of alien technology compatible with ours has to align with our period, right? The technologies have to be in the same era within the space time. And what is the possibility of this happening in a universe of billions of years? A lot of sense. I found this idea in the text very interesting. If you liked it, right? Leave your like, leave your comment if you agree. Write to me. It makes a lot of sense. Now let's watch this very interesting video here that shows a tokamak in full operation. Look. A video that shows a plasma pulse from the ST-40 Takamak filmed at high speed. Almost didn't get my voice out, which is 16,000 frames per second. Wow. Each pulse lasts about 0.2 seconds and displays the visible light from the plasma edge in pink tones. So here we have an accelerated image, right? And the plasma would be these pink tones here in the image. Look at that man. Energy through nuclear fusion. The core is too hot to be seen during the experiment. Lithium is injected into the plasma and it glows red when excited and turns green when ionized, revealing the magnetic field lines. For those who don't know what a tokamak is, a tokamak is a system to try to generate energy through nuclear fusion and it generates a very strong magnetic field. Some people say, but how does a thing like this, a nuclear fusion reactor, not destroy the building where it is installed? right? Because man, it's things that are sometimes hotter than the surface of the sun. How does this not destroy the building where it is installed? So that's where the magnetic fields come in. The TAMAC creates magnetic fields that contain this energy so that it doesn't destroy everything, right? So that's why the building is not destroyed. They create a powerful magnetic field there and contain this plasma. Then they say here, right? The people who made this video, right? They say that the use of lithium is part of the $52 million upgrade at the ST40 in partnership with the U.S. and U.K. Department of Energy based on studies that show that the element improves plasma performance. Look at that. The research investigates the so-called X-point radiator regimes, the XPR and operational mode, right, that can cool the plasma before it hits internal components, reducing wear and increasing the efficiency of future fusion plants, right? As I've said here, nuclear fusion is still a bit complicated because we spend more energy to keep it on than the energy it generates itself, right? The energy spent to keep it running is much greater than the resulting energy from the experiment. So it has to be the opposite, right? The energy generated has to be greater than the energy employed. And we haven't reached that level yet, right? But there it is. Research is evolving. I think soon we'll be able soon, right? In a good few years, we will have energy through nuclear fusion, which is a very abundant energy, practically almost infinite for the use of humanity. And I will continue to follow all this research here so you don't miss anything. You know what to do. Follow the channel now. Let's talk people about three atlas, right? The object of greatest interest to most people interested in astronomy recently. A new image of the interstellar object 3I atlas captured on August 2nd, 2025 by the two meter twin telescope on the island in the Canary Islands shows a faint jet pointing towards the sun. Something anomalous since the tails of comets, right? The tails of known comets always extend right away from the sun, pushed by radiation and solar wind. In the case of 3 Atlas, it has a faint tail towards the sun, right? A tenuous tail. This structure called the Anti-Ale had already been observed previously by the Hubble Space Telescope. Here is the article that reports that the sun is in this direction here. And here is the anti-ale right. This more accentuated light on this side here. And the sun is in this position in this direction, right, to be more precise. Well, and then the anti-tail intrigued astronomers again by challenging the expected behavior of common comets. According to Avi Lobo on Medium, Particles of the ideal size to scatter light, right, should be repelled, not attracted in the direction of the sun. 
Avi Loeb and physicist Eric Keough Wright worked on a study to explain the anti-tail, but the author criticizes Wright the fact that many specialists treat 3i atlas as a simple comet, ignoring its anomalies. He lists several of them here in his text, Wright, each of which in isolation would already be extraordinary. Right, so he, I'm going to talk here, right here it is, uh, I'll show this later, let 3i atlas pass by here. So listing the strange things here, right, that Avi put in his text, look anti-tail, facing the sun, much greater mass and superior velocity to other interstellar objects, right? Astronomers explain this because of its advanced age, right, because it's very old, so it's been accumulating speed. But anyway, it's a strange thing when compared to other comets' trajectory aligned with the ecliptic plane, right? That is also a very rare thing, closed passage to Mars, Venus, and Jupiter, that thing you always talked about, right, that apparently three ELAs is making a movement that seems to want to probe these three planets. Uncommon composition with nickel-rich gas, but no iron about the nickel without iron. People, there is this article here, right, that was published by the VT staff at ESO, where they report the detection of iron along with nickel. Here it is, correct? The elements are present in an unbalanced ratio. There is a significantly greater amount of nickel compared to iron, though iron is still present. The iron appears in minor quantities, primarily as small coins, due to its distinct chemical makeup and its lower volatility relative to nickel. This difference explains why nickel is detected more frequently than iron. These are not my own words. The article itself states this. It seems Avi may have omitted this point from his summary, this particular observation or update. Nevertheless, moving forward, Avi Lowe compiled a list of the peculiarities of 3i slash atlas. For instance, it has a low water content, about 4%, which is unusual for a comet. It also exhibits extreme negative polarization, a phenomenon never previously observed, making 3i slash atlas especially anomalous. Additionally, its origin is close to the direction from which the wow signal was detected in 1977. This connection is highly speculative, but it cannot be entirely dismissed since the object does originate from that region. However, linking the WOW signal directly to 3i slash Atlas seems to be Avi's own idea, as I have not seen other astronomers making this association. Still, Avi concludes by noting that future observations, such as possible flybys of 3i slash Atlas near the European probes Clipper and IC, which I mentioned yesterday, will likely not reveal significant material due to the comet's low gas density. He proposes that the scientific community may need to reassess the situation in the future, potentially with the assistance or risk of artificial intelligence that is more receptive to investigating anomalies. Such AI could be used to review and analyze the data more thoroughly. In summary, 3i slash Atlas is indeed a highly unusual object, and we will continue to monitor it. There are still images from Hayabusa 2 that are expected to provide clearer visuals, possibly surpassing those from Hubble due to the closer proximity at which they were taken. The images and data are currently being processed, but I anticipate that soon we will have access to this information, allowing us to better observe and understand what is happening with 3i slash Atlas. Once the Hayabusa 2 data is released, I will share it with you here. To stay updated, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I also want to introduce a new feature here where I highlight comments from viewers who regularly participate and support the videos. I have decided to showcase some of your remarks at the end of each video, or at least as frequently as possible. The first comment I want to share is from our friend Richard Hector. He wrote, great content. It's clear and informative. Criticism is inevitable, as I often notice people complaining instead of appreciating the concise explanations provided on the channel. Criticizing is easy, but actually studying, simplifying, explaining, and producing all this content is not simple. 
Congratulations on making the information accessible even to those unfamiliar with the subject. So thank you, Richard, for your comment. Indeed, criticism is part of the process. Some viewers may become frustrated when I don't say what they expect, such as continually insisting that 3i slash Atlas is a spacecraft. We must be careful with such claims, as nothing is certain. Even regarding the comet, some claim I have stated with absolute certainty that it is a comet, but I never gave a 100% guarantee. If you find a clip where I claim that with certainty, send it to me, because I have never made such a statement. Since I began discussing this topic, I have always said that it is more likely to be a comet than anything else. But there remains a possibility it could be something different. Once again, thank you, Richard, for your feedback. I will continue to showcase your comments whenever possible, as your ongoing support is invaluable. We are a community, and I am truly grateful to have your encouragement, which is essential for sustaining this work online. Sometimes criticism can become personal and discouraging.